Hi, I'm Andy Muirhead. Welcome to Collectors. This is my new little friend. He's actually a musical instrument, a trumpet from Sudan. And he's just a small part of a huge collection you're going to see tonight. I've always been a collector, but for the past 20 or so years I've been a collector of African art, and traditional art, uh, tribal art, because I like the history and I like the stories. I really started collecting when I started buying for my business. I found there were things that I just couldn't be parted from. These Mangbetu uh, sarcophagus, sit in our hallway to welcome visitors. They're beautifully carved and etched with their geometric pattern. I'd never found anything like them before, nor had I seen anything. They're just wonderful pieces. First went to Africa in 1971, and then I started going back regularly to buy in 1994. Uh, when I go, I travel up country. I hire cars and vans and broken down ancient vehicles. Occasionally I go to new places, but usually I'm going back to visit friends from the past. It's not everyone's kettle of fish, it's tough travel, but I think I'm blessed. I think I'm so privileged, it's, it's an honour. In Mali, where I um, have travelled a lot, where I first started going, they built me a house there and they, they call me family, but the children call me Tababu Wai, and that means white woman doctor. I know that when I buy things, it does help communities. Everything is sold by the village council and then the money is used for the benefit of the whole village. They always look forward to people who are buying for businesses and collectors coming because it's money. The history of trade, of their artefacts and their decommissioned art is, is old. It's, it's not a contemporary thing. These little ancestor figures are one of the very first pieces that I collected. And this is one of my favourites. She's a bronze maternity fertility figure. These dolls are Akwaba. They're from the Ashanti people in Ghana and they represent a beautiful, healthy baby. I like the fact that it's not made as a de decorator object. It's made for use. It's a functional item. It might be used to teach the children. It might be used to tell the history or it might be used to bring the gods and the spirits in or it might be used to celebrate life and death, but it, it's all functional. I've got about 50 masks from right across Africa and from lots of different cultures. And probably one of my favorites is the elephant mask. I've never seen another thing like it. And he was also one of my earliest finds. This is a mask from the Dogon people in Mali. It's actually five meters tall. It's used to carry the ancestor spirits from the stars to the ground during funerary ceremonies. The things that make me most excited are the things that I've never seen or heard of before. They're not in books or anything and occasionally something will come up that, that's not been documented. And that's really special, it's very exciting. Learning about the culture and learning about the people and getting to know the, the friends is probably one of the best things of being interested in African art and in collecting it. Welcome to the program, Anne. Thank you. Thanks for coming in and bringing a small part of your collection. <laughs> These are huge objects. Yeah. How do you transport something like that back from Africa? If I did that, it'd end up in a thousand pieces. Well, I long for the day that I could travel without baggage. <laughs> I uh, bet. But, I ship containers. And something that I'm um, interested in, obviously, is whether these objects are um, more cultural items or whether they're items that are being produced um, for a, a Western market. As much as possible, I buy things that have been produced in the village for the use of the village mm -hmm. that they then have decided they want to sell or they've got a better one or they don't need any more. One of the aspects that sort of worries me slightly is the fact that these ceremonial things might die off as the countries become more westernised. Mm -hmm. Is that a fear that you have? It is. Uh, I've seen a lot of changes in Mali since I started going there, Mali in particular. But 
one of the things about collecting is showing the carvers in the villages that their form and their art is respected. Mm -hmm. sure. and, and it gives it a status, gives it a, something for them to be proud of. Mm. Does it help to so, keep it alive as well? I think so, mm -hmm. yeah. You've got the same problem that a lot of our collectors have of how do you decide what to keep and hold on to as a personal collection mm -hmm. and what you let go of yeah. in your business? I try to restrict my collection to one piece each trip, but sometimes it takes me a year or so to decide which piece. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right, yes. Yes, I have to let go, you know. And the nature of African objects is that they are made of natural materials. Do you mm. find it difficult to first export and then import those sorts of materials mm. into Australia? No, every country has similar uh, quarantine rules. When I'm shipping out of Africa, I usually have things that contain a fumigator. Mm -hmm. um, and I photograph it so when it arrives in Australia, the customs have photos of everything. Mm. And then other things, some of them ha have to have other treatments like irradiation yeah. and things yeah. like that. Do you seem to have amassed the most amazing knowledge. Are you actually writing all of this down and passing it on with the objects when you sell it? Because that knowledge is invaluable. Collectors always want to know what their, the history or the story of their piece. It, mm -hmm. it gives it meaning, it gives it significance. Yeah. It's not just a thing. You have enough knowledge there, obviously, to be writing a fantastic catalogue of mm -hmm. your collection. You should do that. One day. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much for coming in and showing us a small part of the collection. When are you off travelling again? Soon. A Soon? couple of weeks. Oh, yeah. Very good. We'll have to yeah. check in when you get back. Yeah. <laughs>